Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Exoprimal, the PvPve multiplayer dinosaur shooter released by Capcom back in July. I spent around 20 hours beating this game with a few friends and I'm now going to attempt to predict whether this game will survive. First of all, what the hell even is this game? I honestly didn't have much of a clue before I started other than exosuits and dinosaurs, which meant, yep, something I'm going to want to try. But I do think the game is actually a really cool idea. So the basic structure of the game is it's a purely multiplayer game where two teams of five face off against each other and a bunch of dinosaurs. Each game is separated into two phases. The first phase is PvE only. Both teams will be individually fighting waves of dinosaurs and competing with each other to get their wave completed faster. This is because once you beat the first wave, you're transported immediately to the second phase, which is where the PvPve element comes in. Whichever team beats phase 1 first will have an advantage in phase 2, as they can start completing their next objective earlier. Phase 2 is then a multiplayer match. It can be payload, which is by far the most common and the best experience in my opinion, a, a domination style game mode and a few others that I didn't really like too much. Both teams will be on the same map now, fighting off waves of dinosaurs and each other in order to win the game. If this sounds like it would be absolute chaos, then that is because it simply is, and that's where the game shines the most. It excels through its chaos. At the time of recording, there are 10 exosuits to choose from all with their own unique abilities. These range from damage-based exosuits to tanks to healers, so team cohesion in regards to which suits everyone picks can aid in giving you an edge over a mismatched team, as there is no restrictions on who can pick what. You could have five healers if your team was really that stupid. The sheer diversity in terms of abilities is great. I played as all ten for each character I got their specific achievement, and I do have a good understanding of them all. And they're all at least a little bit fun. But the abilities are designed to accompany the obscene amount of action going on on screen brilliantly. The cooldowns aren't stupidly long, meaning you can cycle between your abilities at a decent pace. In terms of the two phases, after a while, the first one does begin to feel a little bit pointless. There's almost zero challenge involved, so you're mostly just playing on autopilot to get to phase two where the real fun begins. But even then, the small advantage that you gain from the first phase doesn't make all too much of a difference unless it's drastic. For example, most games end up with phase 2 being payload, where both teams must move their own payload to an end zone. And since both teams' end zones are in the same place, you're going to interact with the other team anyway. But, the highest amount of difference between the percentages that you will be when you get there is around 10%. So most of the time, both teams will be within 10% of each other by the time they get to the end. And you encounter the other team when you get to around 80%. That is when both payloads are pointing at each other. So you're going to be fighting each other regardless, unless you're miles behind or miles in front. There's also the Dominators. Each team gets access to one Dominator a game, which allows one player to transform into a random dinosaur and cause havoc for the other team. This is insanely fun, but it also heavily messes up the balancing of the game. Whilst choosing the correct moment to deploy your Dominator can absolutely turn the tides of battle, there's no guarantee that both teams will get the same dinosaur, and they're not all built equal. I played around 60 games of Exoprimal over my 20 hours, and I saw three different dinosaurs being used in the Dominator. The Triceratops, the Carnotaurus and the T-Rex. I think I only saw the T-Rex once or twice maybe across all of these games and I did get to use it which was pretty cool. The T-Rex is easily the best followed by the Carno but the Triceratops is just so much weaker than both of these that if one team gets a carnivorous dinosaur whilst the other gets a Triceratops that team suddenly becomes heavy favourites to win the game assuming it's deployed correctly. This brings me to the second biggest issue that this game has. We'll talk about the first afterwards, but there's no reward for winning or losing. There's a slight XP bonus if you win the game, 
but there's no ranking system or anything. There's not even a stats page where you can see your win-loss ratio at the time of recording. You'll feel a minor wave of disappointment after losing a close game, and a glimmer of relief upon winning one, but it has no impact on anything, which is a real bummer. You're literally just playing for fun. Who remembers? Who remembers when video games were made for just fun? What a time. But the biggest issue this game has is its repetition. And how Capcom decides to combat this will determine whether Exoprimal survives or not. There's a lot of cool moments in Exoprimal that you won't get to see all that often. And that's because other people in the game haven't got as far as you in the story. There is a story, but you experience it through video logs you receive for completing matches. The story is also kind of crap, but hey, that's not why I'm playing this game. I'm playing this for the exosuits and the dinosaurs. There are so many cool maps and dinosaurs in the game, there's genuinely a lot of variety. But it doesn't feel like it, because most matches feature the same five or so dinosaurs on the same three, four or so maps that everyone else in the game can also play. The moments when both teams are forced to work together to take on a massive boss are really cool, but you would also need to be matched with nine other players who have also made it that far in the game. The final boss sequence is also incredibly fun, kudos for that, that was just awesome. The game needs constant updates. The gameplay formula of cycling through abilities and shooting swarms of raptors does get repetitive. Capcom need to ensure this game gets constant updates. I'm talking new exosuits with new abilities, new maps, new dinosaurs, and above all else, new game modes. The first phase of this game being so easy to complete on autopilot will eventually prevent people from continually having this game in their rotation, because they will be thinking, oh, I will need to sit through that first phase again. It's not that it's boring, it's just really easy and it doesn't exactly get the brain going. I hope that this game survives, I really do. It's got a brilliant premise and it's really fun. I feel like the PvPVE space needs to be tapped into more from developers. Games like Hunt Showdown, for example, provide an experience like no other game can. There's potential for Exoprimal to be an absolute hit. The bones are there. But Capcom have to ensure they give people enough of a reason to keep coming back. If they do that, and they continue to support the game, Exoprimal will be just fine. If not, Exoprimal will be a distant memory of a cool idea, clouded by the possibility of what could have been. Thank you for making it to the end of the video, I hope that you did enjoy it, if you did then please consider leaving a like as that would greatly help me out and if you want to see more videos from me then you could always subscribe as I upload every single week. But that is all for now, have a nice day and goodbye. The Raptor Cascade, I advise you to prepare your strategy while the Raptors fall to the earth below. The enemy team has taken the lead, I will provide a trigger motion.